everybody, it's Diane Gale here from the blog and YouTube channel, Sustainable Slow Living. And today, I want to talk to you about a slow living fall evening. The slow living lifestyle prioritizes living seasonally, and the chilly evenings that we're having now, this fall, that will turn into colder evenings come the winter, are the perfect time for us to slow down and to intentionally spend our time in a way that is rejuvenating for mind, body, and soul. There's six different ways that I want to talk to you about that you can do this in a fall evening. And everybody's going to have their own way of doing these. So the things that I'm putting out there for you today are really just suggestions. You can take these six different practices and you can make them your own. And the first practice is to cozy in for the evening. So once you come in the house for the evening, um, it's nice to wash your face, brush your teeth, put on cozy pajamas, um, set the lighting in the house, set the mood with maybe some candles around the house, maybe some soft music playing in the background, and just get comfortable. Um, there's just something about being cozied in and uh, toasty warm when the weather outside is chilly, especially if it's like a blustery night. It's, it's really a good feeling and it changes your state of mind and prepares you to fully enjoy a slow living fall evening. And the second way that I suggest enjoying an evening at home is uh, preparing yourself a healthy meal. And I like to do this at least two nights a week. You know that I'm about cooking from scratch and healthy food, so I do it a little bit more than that. But you have to do whatever is right for you and whatever fits into your schedule. And a healthy meal can be anything from um, a, a sandwich made with a homemade um, whole grain bread, you know, and, and filled with things that are really good for you, maybe some uh, leftover chicken that you have from the night before with some avocado and tomato and if you're growing sprouts some sprouts it can be simple like a sandwich or I mean it can be an elaborate surf and turf dinner it's all a matter of what you want to make for yourself I just suggest making something that makes you feel good um, like you are treating yourself and take the time to set the table take the time to light the candles, use the good dishes. Um, there's really no reason to save them for a special occasion. Uh, dishes are, I mean, things like that are meant to be enjoyed. And packing them away and saving them for some special occasion that rarely ever comes is a poor use of, um, of things that are there to bring you pleasure. And make something that's going to nourish your body. By preparing a meal that's really going to nourish you, you're um, bringing clarity to your mind. It, you know, your brain needs to be nourished. It's an organ. You are putting your body in a position where it's going to produce more energy for you. It's, it's going to feel better. It's going to work better. Uh, aches and pains are going to disappear when you really give yourself nutritional meals. And you are for sure nourishing your spirit. There's something that happens with spiritual connection when we take care of ourselves, particularly when we put good nutritious food in our bodies that our bodies can use. So making a nourishing meal is more than just tantalizing your taste buds and going the extra step and making it special for yourself. I mean, it's, it's a feel good activity. And I think that there is something that, well, I don't think I know that there is something that happens in our state of mind when we take the time to take care of ourselves we're telling ourselves that we're worth it because we are and then a slow living fall evening is the perfect time to learn a new skill so learn a skill that you need in the moment or that you're going to need in the future um, but you know, the, one of the other things we're going to talk about is learning a hobby. So there's a difference between learning a skill and learning a hobby. 
Not that skills can't be hobbies and not that hobbies aren't skills, but I just want to distinguish between the two for the purposes of this video. You know, um, a skill I'm defining in this video as something that you are going to build competencies um, for, um, you know, because you need to be able to perform something, an activity right now, or because you're going to need to use those skills to perform activities in the future. So things that I have done is I um, spent time, some time learning sign language. Um, I didn't learn very much, but I did spend a little time learning that. I spent time learning gardening skills because when the warm weather comes, that's something that I, you know, want to use. And um, I one one fall I built some outdoor furniture. Uh, it was kind of fun. Um, so yeah, do, do build a skill. And then of course the next thing is to spend some time. Uh, you know, honing a hobby or learning a new hobby. And a hobby should be something that just is done for the pure pleasure of doing it. So I love to crochet. That's one of my hobbies. I love to sew. That's another hobby. I think you all know by now that I love to cook and, you know, cooking is, is something that, you know, there's just endless knowledge to be acquired. A hobby can also be something like putting puzzles together or working crosswords. Um, I mean, it can really be anything. It should be an activity that just brings you pleasure. It's just about the pleasure of doing it. And then another way to enjoy um, a slow living fall evening is to just kick back and relax without guilt. I think there's so many of us that have a hard time doing this. And I was one of those people for most of my life. I can say that in the past decade, maybe a little more, I have gotten very good at being able to do that. Um, I don't have a lot of time to do it, but when I do decide that it's time, and it's really about making a decision that it's time, because you're not always going to have the time, but when you're feeling overwhelmed and frazzled and there's just so much coming at you and you need a break, give yourself permission to take a break. Sit back and do something that's relaxing for you, and don't allow yourself to feel any guilt about it. Don't let your mind wander to the things that you think that you should be doing that feel like they're more important and like they're urgent to get done, you need to take some time off. And everybody's gonna do that differently. I'm pretty introverted, and I haven't had television for many years, so I sometimes like to watch a movie, um, or my favorite YouTube videos. But dare I say it's a good time to watch sustainable, slow-living YouTube videos? Uh, yes, that is a plug, can you blame me? Um, you know, those are things that I enjoy doing. I like to read a book. I like to just, you know, simply put my feet up and not really engage in activity, but just relax. Now, um, if you're an introvert who already has a lot of screen time, you might want to go for reading a book or thumbing through a magazine, doing something that gets you away from the screen time because the screen time isn't so great for us. Or maybe you're more of an extrovert. So for you, kicking back and relaxing without guilt might mean having friends over and playing some board games, or you know, going out for a few drinks, or going out for dinner, or you know, whatever activity, but getting together with people. Maybe just getting together with people and visiting. As an extrovert, that might be more fulfilling for you. But whatever it is that you decide to do, give yourself permission to do it. Don't allow your mind to keep telling you that it's not what you should be doing. Enjoy it without guilt. And then the final thing I want to share with you that's great to do on a slow living fall evening is to treat yourself to a home spa night. Really taking care of ourselves um, physically, particularly cosmetically, is something that a lot of us struggle with time to do. And I'm really not the kind of person who 
spends a lot of time doing that anyway. I'm the kind of girl who gets a shower, I put my hair up, um, I brush my teeth, and I get dressed and I'm ready to go for the day. But I love to take some time to just pamper myself. I might give myself a facial or I might um, condition my hair, put it up in a towel and you know let it really soak in those oils. Um, and you know shaving your legs is something that it just you have to fit it in somewhere, right? There's so many ways, a nice hot bath, dry brushing your skin, whatever it is that's important to you, that makes you feel pampered, head into the bathroom, again, set the atmosphere, light some candles, make sure that your lighting is pleasing to you. I mean, it has to be um, efficient for what you're doing, but you know, make sure that it's pleasing to you. Make yourself a really nice, healthy, nutritious smoothie so that you can enjoy that while you're pampering yourself. Uh, put on some music or again, your favorite YouTube videos, whatever it is that makes you feel relaxed and makes you feel good, just do that and take a little bit of time to pamper yourself. Maybe a mani-pedi, you know? Um, uh, exfoliating your feet, uh, moisturizing your body. It, it can be anything that works for you, but take the time to let yourself know that you matter, that you're worth it. And a slow living fall evening, you know what? Sometimes you're gonna have the whole evening and you're gonna be able to cozy in and you're gonna be able to make a healthy meal and you're gonna be able to participate in a hobby and you're gonna be able to give yourself some spa time. You're gonna be able to do all of those things and other times you're only gonna have an hour or two. So cozy in and pick one thing or the other, but take the time out to participate in these six activities because it makes all the difference in the world about how you feel the rest of the time and it makes you more productive, healthier, um, more at peace. It's a, a wonderful thing to just take time for you and that's what this season is all about. And the winter season coming up is um, pretty much the same thing. It's about, you know, I mean, it's more, there's more introspection that's going on, but it is still about spending that time doing those things indoors. Our weather has turned cold and it's time for us to kind of pull in just like the animal kingdom. So I hope these are activities that um, you're going to participate in and that you're going to get as much out of as I do. I hope that you're able to find the things that work for you to slow your life down and get the most out of it. It's one lifetime, it's over before we know it, and the point is to live it. So be intentional with your slow living fall evenings, get the most out of them. And take a second to let me know down in the comments how you're gonna do that. As always, I'm so glad that you're here with me today and we're gonna get together again. We're gonna do it real soon. <laughs>